on there. There's nothing to this in my hands. And get it on there. Make a really nice crust. Degrees. Oh man, let's do it. This is That is, isn't it? 325. Yes. That's the big number, man. That's what we were looking for. 325. Hey, guys, how you doing? I'm uh, Mark Gill. This is Mark's on the Grill. Mark, Grill, you got it. So, uh, hey, listen, if you missed our uh, Facebook Live last night, here's what we did. Follow me over here. It gets cool over here under the screen. Now, not everybody wants the big turkey for Thanksgiving or, uh, you know, if you don't want something super different, maybe you want to give your guests a choice or maybe you're just looking for a, a neat thing to do. So here's what we did last night, okay? We took this uh, about four pound prime rib and we asked the butcher to cut off the uh, the ribs on the bottom. It's a, it's a three rib cut, but tie them back on. That way we still get that flavor and that, you know, all, all the stuff we love about the bones, but we don't have to try and cut it off later. And we give ourselves a nice kind of base to allow to get a little crunchy, a little on the burnt side, a little on the charred side when we put it in here, okay? So here's what we did. We took a knife, uh, took a little frustration, went all over it, and then took some garlic, poured it on top, and put it right inside the deep holes. And then we, and then we <laughs> covered it with salt, pepper, and more garlic. This is gonna make a really nice crust. And one of the reasons is we left it in the fridge overnight, uncovered. That gets everything kind of dry. It's a little trick I learned from one of our food stylists uh, at, the, at, the, at HSN there. Really cool thing. With your turkey, try that too. Leave it in the fridge, uncovered, 24 hours before you put it in the oven or however it is you decide to cook it. And that skin is gonna be a little bit crispier. Nice stuff. All right, so here, I'm gonna close this for a second because I do want to take a uh, just a moment to talk about how we're going to cook this, okay? So if you've ever thought about a Kamado grill or you have a big green egg um, and maybe size is an issue, you can always get the mini, all right? So now think about this. This is four pounds, eight ounces per serving. So you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, dinner for eight people. It really shouldn't take me that long to do math. <laughs> okay, and we'll have a little bit of room to spare. So as you're looking at those big green eggs and those big Kamado things, if it's a space commitment, you gotta think to yourself, when's the next time I'm cooking for 47 people, right? If you're constantly four or five, six people, this is a pretty good option. I gotta tell you something now. I don't wanna lose a lot of heat when I uh, when I open this up, all right? Because uh, you, you know, getting getting these things to temperature is, is what it's all about. That's what the, uh, the time commitment is. Once you get there, they're sealed really, really well, you know, as well as your oven door, uh, you know, and ceramic holds heat incredibly. So, you know, it's really uh, not that much of a chore to keep that temperature once you get there, but you do wanna do what you gotta do with the upper and lower damper. So when I open this, add it quickly, here's what you're gonna see. Imagine if you will. <laughs> we use the lump charcoal, so we're gonna get that nice woody flavor, but I don't want a smoked flavor on this because you gotta remember, when you smoke something, that takes it into the gravy, that takes it into whatever soup you make, that takes it whatever sandwiches you make, so if you make the commitment to smoke something, put those wood chips on, remember, that's the flavor you're gonna get through all your leftovers, everything. So this time around, I just want a nice char. You know what I'm saying? I wanna let that fat cap sizzle up, get nice and crunchy. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take it uh, to temperature, uh, at 325 and the temperature that I'm looking for is gonna be right around 115 degrees okay so it's just shy of rare uh, blue rare might, might be what it is now we're not gonna eat it like that but here's what we're gonna do once we take that out of there we're gonna open up the top and the bottom dampers all right and that temperature is gonna shoot from about 325 Wee! and it's gonna head somewhere north of hopefully 700 degrees all right so in the time that it takes to do that our rib roast will have had time to rest. All those juices can make their way back to the surface, so that's kind of nice. But then once we put it in there, man, we're gonna get that last 20 or 30 degrees at six or 700 degrees, all right? And what that's gonna do is give us that really nice crust that we're looking for on a prime rib, okay? So this isn't a low and slow all day thing. This is kind of how you would cook it in your oven, but we're gonna impart those, uh, you know, those flavors that, that that charcoal gives us, but then we're gonna like scare a crust onto it. All right, come on over here. Head and open this really quick. Uh, so I know I'm at 325. I know that these settings for the dampers are what's going to keep me there. This is about 20 minutes a pound, four pounds, 80 minutes. See, that's quick math. So you got about just shy of an hour and a half. It'll be really easy to keep an eye on the temperature on this one. So we're going to add our last little kick of salt, pepper, garlic, because that's the best stuff ever. There we go. We pat a little bit on the side. Now I'm going to open this up real quick. All right. Now we've got our place setter in there. That diverts the heat to the side so it acts like an oven. And you can see here, this is all adjustable. So you wanna make sure the spacing on the outside is even. All right. Bye, fella. 
been nice getting to know you. I like the hear the sizzle. That's my song, man. Oh, by the way, there's probably about 20 or 25 cloves of garlic stuck in there, plus the all the garlic oil butter on the side. So that's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and get, invite this guy to the party. There we are, I'm the deepest part of the meat. Like I said, we are gonna look for an internal temperature of about 110 degrees. Oh my God, you can't believe how good it smells out here. Holy cow. All right, there we are. We overshot it by one degree. So let's have a look here. We've taken our roast out. I'm gonna come on in behind here, just like this. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead with our garlic butter and we're gonna get that started on the outside of this crust. Oh man. All right, so here's what we've done so far. At three, I gotta stop the beeping. Oh my goodness, it's gotta stop. There we go. <laughs> so here's what we did, guys, as we, uh, as we get the garlic butter on this crust to get it nice and ready for that nice hot big green egg. So guys, what we did was we took this guy up to 110 degrees at a setting of 325, all right? Didn't put any wood chips in here. All I want is the taste of that uh yeah lump charcoal okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our egg ready all right we'll put a few more chunks of charcoal in there all right and we're gonna get this ready to get up to that five six seven eight hundred degrees that we're looking for so let's go ahead flatten that out a little bit we're gonna open our dampeners up top and bottom just like that all right so here's what we're gonna do guys we're gonna get this grill as hot as we can get it in that time, this is gonna uh, have its little rest time that we're looking for. That butter's gonna start to incorporate with that salt and pepper and garlic that we're loving in this, okay? And then that, whoa, hello, <laughs> how you doing? Here's our price. And then that is gonna go back there for the last kind of 20 degrees that we're shooting for. And oh man, is that crust gonna turn into something. So we'll see you in just a little bit while this comes up to temperature, guys. This is fun. Okay, there it is. Uh, we'll get out of the light here. There, <laughs> we, we got tricky lighting out here. All right, so there it is, you guys. Um, rare to medium rare is about 130, 135. We're there. Uh, we buried this needle. I've kind of had the lid up and down a little bit. Holy cow, did this get hot. Hot, hot, hot. Like, like buried the needle hot. So here we go. Oh, man, look at that. You can see the fire jump, but as soon as the oxygen hits it, you burp it a little bit. Holy cow, look at that glow, man. Even under here. Look at it. Can't imagine how hot that got in there. That was fantastic. So let's go ahead and take this off, just like that. I want this to rest properly. So come on in here, just so when we edit this together, no, don't, don't, not in front of the light. Come on in here, because I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a turnaround for you, because you gotta see this, man. We put that garlic butter on there, that char, that bubble oil, isn't that pretty? Oh, man, alive. Yep, at about six or 700 degrees and up, we brought this thing from about 120 degrees after it uh, it raised after resting, straight up to about 130, 131. We popped it off here. By the time this rests for about 20 minutes, oh man, oh look at that. As soon as I touch it, oh come on. You seeing this? That's very nice. Maria's coming in close. The smell out here is so crazy, I can't even deal with it. So I'm gonna get through that one piece of rope right there, and then I'm gonna get through that. Do my best not to stab Trish. There you go. What's that? Hedrick, hey, 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 man. Oh, your mom. So check this out. Your mom. So first things first. Oh my. Here's those ribs that we let sit on the place that are nice and charred on that side. Kept the roast nice and protected. So let's go ahead and give this a cut. And look at that, you guys. Oh man, there's some color for you. That. Uh, hey, well, that's the prize there. Somebody's good at dinner. They get one of those. We're gonna try a bite. Right, right there. Here. Maria's, Maria's out here paying attention. Here you go, sweetie. That's hot, but give it a go. Huh? Oh, that's amazing. Well, no, that's pretty good. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is what I've been waiting all day for. So this morning, we came on to kind of let you know what we were doing. Then we, uh, we got that big green egg lit, got it up to temperature. We had to join us while we popped this in. And I'll tell you what, guys, when it comes down to it, isn't that what it's all about? That perfect medium, which is always what I'm looking, oh gosh, look at that, you guys. 
Love it, love it, love it. We have people in the house that love everything from rare to medium rare. So I shot for kind of a uh, uh, rare, medium rare in the center, and then that way on the outside for the kids. And uh, I know uh, uh, Grandma, uh, she doesn't like it quite that well done. So I'm just gonna pull this out here. This way you gotta see you guys, look at this. Holy moly, there's that garlic that's lived in there since last night. Look at those juices flow. Woo, that's nice. All right, let's get a little cut here. Gotta try it right from dead center. Gotta make sure we get a little bit of garlic in there. Guys, with Thanksgiving coming up, sometimes give your guests a little bit of a, a, you know, a different choice, different treat if you're getting tired of turkey, or if you just wanna try an awesome way to make a prime rib, try it the way you saw it today. It's so simple, it's so easy, and that crust and that garlic, man. Guys, I love it when you join us. Make sure you post your pictures. Come on here, Maria. Come come eat with me. <laughs> post your pictures. So here, cheers. Ting. I'm Mark. This is Maria. This is Mark's on the Grill. Guys, this is so fantastic. I wish I could share it with all of you. Have a great night, and we'll see you on our next journey.